I just know that that was a murder. You know what I'm saying? That was a spiritual murder, whether people know it or not. Because God don't kill people. You know what I'm saying? Whether people know it or not. And um, I could go deep, but a lot of people I would have to really bring proof. You know what I'm saying? For what I learned. And she just was cut down in the prime of her life. If that weren't bad enough, former Black Round Records associate Ayatollah Marf recently claimed that Barry Hankerson received a $90 million settlement for Aaliyah's passing. When Aaliyah dies, I was with uh, with with uh, um, Barry when Aaliyah died for a wrongful death. He got paid $90 million for her death. Am I supposed to say that on TV? Huh. I don't, I don't, Sue me. I ain't got nothing. I just, so I was, I was with him on the negotiation. You think you're going to freeze me out? You think you're going to make it impossible for me to get f***ing bread so I can keep telling the truth about your monkey ass? F*** you, Sean Carter. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Welcome to One Buck, where we keep it a buck, and we, we hope y'all keep it a buck too. I'm Kev. This is Coop, man. One Buck Podcast, back with another scoop. Like I said, man, we like to expand that brain, right, cuz? Absolutely, expand like a rubber pie. band. And then smack you in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? And you tasted your, your, uh, Yo, yo, people's cooking and you, your your mama, whether it be your mama, your man. grandmama, man. big mama, whatever, you know what I'm saying? You, you accidentally, you know, try to sneak a quick bite and man. Got popped in your mouth with some shit real quick. Yeah, you heard it right there, man. Yes, sir, man. Tell them why they, they should go ahead and watch this podcast, man. This podcast, I think, is the most informative podcast out. When I say being informative, I think... When we're bringing y'all the nature of giving you the audio and the visual. Right. Then we kicking game before that, you know what I'm saying? Just giving our intellect. Cause don't get it twisted. Y'all a lot of y'all think that what we say, we just giving you our intellect of what we think about a situation. We break it down on the show. It's, it's his opinion, my opinion. And then we bring it to y'all. And we want to know what, cuz what y'all think. Y'all opinion at the end of the day, man. So dope podcast, one of them Absolutely. ones. Absolutely. I think one of the best podcasts out here, cuz what's your views on the show, man? How you stand? Man, I stand on it like this. This is that podcast for those folks who, you know what I'm saying, may have doubted themselves when they seen something. Man. Thought about it. Get Did crazy. I see what I just seen? Yep. Yep. Didn't right. speak about it. But then they turned around and speaking about right. it, you know what I'm saying? You, I seen that shit. Yeah, yeah. I I should have been told folks about it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those podcasts, like I said, you know, where we the ones are kind of like that narrative that's creating being painted. That we yes, we creating it to see what it is that you want. Yep. What you think, what it is, you know what I'm saying, that you feeling. Cause man, speaking of what you feeling, man, like you know how we do, man. We keep the show pumping. The shows don't stop. Show must going on. Speaking of what you feeling, how you feeling today, man? What you got to lace for the people man, I'm, today? I'm pretty fair for a square, bro. Um, how about you, man? Like I always say, man, we blessed, no stress. Always ready to get that G A M E off my chest. But you know what I mean. Uh, you know how we do, cuz we stir that pot, you know what I'm saying? We hit that switchy, you know what I'm saying? We do all of that right here on the show. We do address the elephant in the room every day. Um, a lot of y'all used to see the elephants in our videos. Yeah. We still address the elephant yeah, in the room. It's just in a different form. You know yeah, what I'm absolutely. saying? Speaking of forms, cuz after knowing what you got up for the day, man, you want to crack it off or you want your boy to go first? Man, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, uh, see what you had stirring. Man, TTG, bah, 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 bah. we got some <laughs> more crazy news. Y'all know when y'all hear that sound, we going we gonna to knock y'all out with this one. Look, man, we've been talking about it. We covered this man in a couple episodes. Uh, we haven't covered him on his own episode. It's been more so of the protege he has made. Uh, a remarkable young man. Um, got a lot of gift to gab, man. Was one of the founders in Rockefeller Records. 
um, and was the one that was really behind Jay-Z's success, Mr. Dame Dash. And I said, Dame Dash. Bah, 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 bah. We back with another bang, one. Bang, bang, bang. I don't know if you've seen this, man. We're going to play this quick clip, man, regarding Dame Dash after I spit what I spit. But it has been said that Aaliyah's death might have been planned. There's evidence surfing. There may be potentially a case to resurface in 2023. Mm. Allegedly, from the plane crash, that Aaliyah's death was planned. So what we're going to do real quick, as y'all know how we do it right here, on the only podcast that keep it a buck and turn around and smack you in the mouth. We're gonna play this clip, cuz y'all yeah. dropping y'all comments, man. Tell them to like, you know what I'm saying? Share, subscribe, man. Do all that with your love. Share man. with your auntie, your cousin, your brother. And y'all check out this clip, man. We'll be right back. Evidence that Aaliyah's death was planned is starting to stack up, and it looks like Aaliyah could finally get her justice in 2023. When Aaliyah died for a wrongful death, he got paid $90 million for her death. Am I supposed to say that on TV? Hmm. Dame Dash and other people who were close to Aaliyah are starting to speak out on all the shady things about Aaliyah's death, and fans want to see this case reopened in 2023. Um, but what I was really more tight about was that I had heard that Lenny Kravitz had offered her a jet and that Hyper took the jet. So that's what really pissed me off about the situation when I heard about that. So you could ask Hype about that. That's what I said. Have you ever have you ever talked to Hype about it? F yeah. And how did that conversation go? Ask him. But was Aaliyah's death really planned? Is there enough evidence to reopen Aaliyah's case? Let's investigate it. A trail of tears for Aaliyah. A horse-drawn carriage carried the fallen star's casket through the streets of New York. A somber procession reminiscent of the funeral for Princess Diana, who was also killed in a tragic accident exactly four years ago today. And just as the British royals mourned the loss of Diana, the royalty of African-American entertainment gathered on this day to remember the R&B princess, Aaliyah. On January 16, 2023, Aaliyah Dana Halton would have turned 44. And it's truly heartbreaking to think what a huge star she would be right now if she was still alive. Aaliyah had it all. She was a triple threat in singing, dancing, and acting. She was smart and cunning. She had natural beauty. The list goes on. Being an entertainer, I wanted to sing, I wanted to act, I wanted to dance. From the moment I stepped foot on stage, um, at six years old in the play Annie. I was like, this is what I want to do. I have to do this. I'm happy doing this. So I'm, I'm living it and I'm very, very happy about it. Aaliyah's star power was undeniable. And if she was still here, a lot of today's R&B singers wouldn't stand a chance. But sadly, on August 25th, 2001, Aaliyah's life was cut short at the age of 22 in a plane accident in the Bahamas. Pleasure. The plane, just after taking off for Florida in perfect weather, suddenly plummeted to the ground. Investigators now saying one of the engines apparently failed. Along with eight passengers, Aaliyah, a young Brooklyn native and a talented singer and actress. Now, the official story is that the plane carrying Aaliyah and eight other people crashed because it was overloaded. However, most of Aaliyah's fans have never accepted this narrative because a lot of things simply don't add up and new evidence is now starting to emerge that Aaliyah's death was not accidental. See, Aaliyah was surrounded by a lot of creepy men most of her life, and even her own family is very sketchy. So let's take a closer look at the evidence supporting to Aaliyah's death being planned. The first man we need to talk to is Hype Williams, because his name gets brought up over and over again when it comes to Aaliyah's suspicious death. On August 21st, 2001, Aaliyah appeared on BET's 106 in Park and revealed that the shooting of the video for her single, Rock the Boat, would start the following day and that Hype Williams would direct it. On August 22nd, Aaliyah flew to Miami to film dance routines on the green screen set, as well as underwater shots for the video. All right, so gotta check things out sometimes, make sure it's looking good. Okay. Right now we're getting ready to do the dance. Excited about that. 
then, for some reason, Hype Williams decided to move the shoot from Miami to the Bahamas. And on August 23rd, Aaliyah and employees of Virgin Records flew to the Bahamas on two flights. But it's still unclear why Hype Williams insisted they shoot the video in the Bahamas when they had already started filming with a green screen in Miami. Because even if he wanted to shoot additional scenes on a real beach, doesn't Miami have enough beaches? It just doesn't make sense, and this is one of many reasons why fans have wondered if this was a ploy to get Aaliyah to travel alone because she was terrified of flying and she always traveled with her mom or brother. What's also suspicious is that Aaliyah's ex-boyfriend, Damon Dash, said he warned Aaliyah not to go to the Bahamas because it wasn't necessary for the video and he felt uncomfortable about Hype Williams asking her to go there. Aaliyah was scheduled to leave the Bahamas on August 26th. However, she chose to leave the day before because she had finished shooting the scenes for the video early. But according to Damon Dash, when Aaliyah saw the plane they gave her, she instantly had a bad feeling about it. When she actually was uh, saw the plane, she um, you know, we had the Blackberries and she said, I don't like this plane. And I was like, well, don't get on it. And she was like, well, I got to because I got work to do. She got on the plane and she always had a very serious fear of planes in general. Mm -hmm. So she had to overcome a fear to get on that plane. However, that's not all. Damon also revealed that Lenny Kravitz had offered Aaliyah a different private jet, but Hype Williams took it away from her. But what I was really more tight about was that I had heard that Lenny Kravitz had offered her a jet and that Hype had took the jet. So that's what really pissed me off about the situation when I heard about that. On August 25th, shortly before 7 p.m., Aaliyah and eight Virgin Records employees boarded a twin-engine Cessna aircraft on the Abaco Islands in the northern Bahamas. The plane was supposed to arrive and pick them up at 4.30. However, it didn't arrive until 6.15. And the charter pilot Louis Key claimed to have overheard passengers arguing with pilot Luis Morales prior to takeoff. Key said that Morales warned them that there was too much weight for a safe flight. However, However, some of the passengers insisted they had to be in Miami Saturday night. There have also been reports that pilot Luis Morales had cocaine in his system and he was not authorized to fly. However, some fans have speculated that someone ordered a smear campaign against the pilot to distract everyone from talking about the people responsible for forcing the pilot to fly an overloaded plane. However, it's still unclear who from Aaliyah's entourage argued with Morales and convinced them to let nine people board the aircraft with all of their equipment. Besides that, According to journalist Kathy Lindoli's 2021 biography of Aaliyah, Aaliyah was extremely nervous about flying on a small plane, and she initially refused to board it and went back into a taxi cab claiming she had a headache. Now here's the really disturbing part. Someone from Aaliyah's entourage was sent to check on her in the taxi, and this person slipped Aaliyah a sedative, and once Aaliyah was unconscious, they carried her into the plane. Eyewitness Kingsley Russell, whose family ran a taxi cab company in the Abaco Islands, later said that Aaliyah's entourage took her out of the van and she didn't even know she was getting boarded on a plane. Sadly, Aaliyah's worst fears came true shortly after takeoff and the plane crashed about 200 feet from the runway. Aaliyah and seven of the eight others on board were killed instantly, while Scott Galen, Aaliyah's security guard, survived the crash but died shortly after. An actress in some movies recently, even a Grammy nominee. Tonight, her family is mourning, fans asking, why her? Aaliyah was buried on August 31st in Manhattan, and an estimated 800 people attended the funeral procession, including a number of celebrities. However, there are no records of Hype Williams being there. Among the mourners joining Aaliyah's grief-stricken parents, her aunt Gladys Knight, Aaliyah's boyfriend Damon Dash, fellow hip-hop poncho Sean Puppy Combs, R&B singers Usher, Maya, and Monica, hip-hop artists Jay-Z, Busta Rhymes, Lil' Kim, Missy, even former heavyweight champ Mike Tyson. As Aaliyah's casket was moved from the famed Frankie Campbell Funeral Chapel, her heartbroken mother, Diane Houghton, gently acknowledged the crowd of mourners. Besides that, Hype Williams was strangely silent on Aaliyah's death, and he refused to talk about what happened in the Bahamas. But see, Williams isn't the only man who's been accused of being involved. And what's even more upsetting is that Aaliyah may have been betrayed by her own family. So you probably know that Aaliyah was manipulated by R. Kelly when she was a teenager, and that Kelly actually married Aaliyah when she was 15, and he was 27 by using a false marriage license. But what's equally disgusting is that Aaliyah's uncle, Barry Hankerson, the founder of Black Round Records, is the one who introduced introduced R. Kelly to Aaliyah. Hankerson was R. Kelly's manager back in the day, and when Aaliyah was just 12 years old, he brought her into the studio and had her sing for Kelly. But then in 1993, when Aaliyah was 14, R. Kelly started working with her on her debut album titled Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. I found Aaliyah 
As a matter of fact, Barry Hankerson, my manager, who's her uncle, uh, told me to go up to Detroit and hear her sing. Once I got up to Detroit, I didn't have to hear her sing because she was glowing. Mm-hmm. I knew she had it. As soon as she started singing, that verified it. And from there, we became here, and everything is all good. So to think that Aaliyah's own uncle basically gave Aaliyah to R. Kelly at a time when everyone in the industry already knew Kelly was a major creep is beyond disgusting. See, R. Kelly was only recently charged and found guilty, but allegations against him go all the way back to the start of his career, and everyone who was someone in the music industry knew about these allegations. And Barry Hankerson must have known as well, because he's been involved in the entertainment industry since the 1970s and was married to legendary singer Gladys Knight. And as if that weren't bad enough, enough former Blackground Records associate Ayatollah Marv recently claimed that Barry Hankerson received a $90 million settlement for Aaliyah's passing. When Aaliyah dies, I was with, uh, with, with uh, um, Barry when Aaliyah died for a wrongful death. He got paid $90 million for her death. Am I supposed to say that on TV? Sue me, I ain't got nothing. So I was I was with him on the negotiations. But there were also several other powerful industry men who were constantly circling around Aaliyah shortly before her death, including Jay-Z. In fact, in an interview with Page Six, Damon Dash claimed he never pursued Aaliyah as hard as Jay-Z did. On top of that, Damon later said that Jay-Z knew R. Kelly a Aaliyah, and yet he still decided to record a joint album with Kelly, which was released less than a year after Aaliyah died. Yeah, but, and the karma happens, but the thing I didn't understand is I was like, I know I'm not fucking with that. And because of the moral challenge and him choosing one way, I knew morally we weren't the same. Word. So to me, Rockefeller was <clears> the <throat> funk, it was over. Word. I couldn't fuck with it. It was something that to me was just like, not to say unforgivable, but un- I couldn't understand it. You know what I'm saying? And then I didn't understand how people didn't, I I thought, well, the the people aren't going to have that. But nobody said nothing. Standing by watching it and just not. Just nobody said. And since all these big industry men were connected to Aaliyah, there's been a lot of speculation that Aaliyah's death was some kind of ritual sacrifice. These men were reportedly all fighting for control over Aaliyah and her career. However, Aaliyah was smart and spiritual, and she often talked about having dreams of escaping the pressure of success and being free. Also, we can't forget that Mary J. Blige once called Aaliyah's death a spiritual murder. And though she refused to elaborate on what she meant, it's extremely extremely weird that she would use those words to describe a plane accident. I just know that that was a murder. You know what I'm saying? That was a spiritual murder, whether people know it or not, because God don't kill people. You know what I'm saying? Whether people know it or not. And um, I could go deep, but a lot of people I would have to really bring, you know what I'm saying? For what I learned. And she just was cut down in the prime of her life. And it's so unfair. And um, it wasn't time. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, I, I believe it wasn't her time to go because from what I know, it ain't supposed to go down like that. But you're probably wondering, where were Aaliyah's parents the whole time? Why did they let their teenage daughter spend so much time with all these grown men? Well, here's where the story gets even creepier. In an interview with Dr. Oz, Aaliyah's uncle, Barry Hankerson, claimed he had no clue about R. Kelly and Aaliyah's secret relationship. However, he said his sister, Aaliyah's mother, Diane, was definitely aware of it. Were you aware of the issues going on with R. Kelly when they were going on? No. No, didn't have a clue completely ignorant to it. Do you think anyone in the family was? Um, yes. Yes, I think my sister knew a lot more than what we thought she knew. And then there are also rumors that at one point R. Kelly was sleeping with Diane while at the same time seeing Aaliyah, which adds another level of horror to this story. So as you can see, there are so many weird and suspicious things about Aaliyah's death. And to this day, most of Aaliyah's fans are convinced her death was planned. In fact, Aaliyah recently started trending on social media and fans are now demanding that authorities should reopen the case and get to the bottom of what really happened to the princess of R&B who had so much to offer the world. Many Aliyah was more than an entertainer. She was a role model who lived with grace and goodness. Aliyah left this world like a princess. People with protest signs urging for Aaliyah to get justice, one fan recently tweeted. It'll be on the same level that the Free Britney movement of 2021. Aaliyah will get justice in 2023. And now we want to hear your opinions on Aaliyah's tragic death. Do you think her death was planned? And should this case be reopened? Let us know in the comments. But it should be told by her brother or by Dane. 
Y'all need to know how amazing she really was. Y'all need to know what she really overcame. Y'all need to know the strength that came behind all of that sweetness and all of that grace. And she was tough. Survived the stuff that she survived. She was tough. And nobody knows the real story. Yeah. Aaliyah's untimely demise changed a lot in my mind. I was angry at first. Why is she so stupid? Why would she get on that plane with all that luggage? Why she got to be so vain? So the luggage could have came late. As much money as she had. But see, what nobody really got told about that story, and it's only been mentioned in a few documentaries, is that the reason why she was in such a rush to leave the island was because someone had called her and told her that Damon Dash was had been in a, in a nearly fatal accident and he was on his deathbed and she had to rush to Miami to be by his side. That's how much she loved him and she was willing to put her life on the line for it. See? If somebody called me and told me that my husband was about to die, I would do whatever I got to do to get there. And from what I was also told from other people that was on the shoot, packing all that luggage on the, the plane wasn't her idea either. She was told because the the, the the rap, you know, the video had wrapped that all of their belongings had to leave right then, that she couldn't leave them behind, that nothing, they had to take everything with them. Knowing that there was already almost a thousand pounds worth of human on that plane and then like 800 pounds of luggage. They said, well, if you got to go right now, you got to take all your stuff with you right now. And she was willing to risk it just to be with Dave. And I believe Dave, in the uh, interview that he had done, maybe five or six years ago, he said he never sent that phone call to summon her to Miami. He never had his assistant call her for any reason. And he wasn't even in Miami. Aaliyah got a phone call. That the love of her life was about to die in Miami. And he wasn't even in Miami. And the call, the call came from his assistant. Which didn't exist either. And Fatima, the choreographer, heard that phone call because she mentioned it too. In the interview, and she never mentioned it again. She got a phone call from a person that wasn't real about a situation that had never happened. Being summoned to a place where her fiancé was not and forced to leave with all of her belongings if she left right there, which would put the plane in danger. I don't know but where I come from. That, that sounds like a setup. Like the, the pilot was a crackhead, a former crackhead, and even he, the crackhead, didn't want to go along with it, but he was told that he had to because he was under contract. Somebody went through a lot of trouble to make sure that that girl got on that plane and that that plane... Like I said, it's not my story to tell. But I'll be damned. There's a lot of people that benefited from Aaliyah being gone. A lot of people made it that wouldn't have made it if Aaliyah was still around. And I'm not so big on the idea of conspiracy theories, but typically the way I see things is if you want to know who the masterminds are behind something, all you have to see is the person who benefits the greatest. That's the person that has the most motive to make sure people get moved around, the person that has the most to gain. In this business, that could be anybody. So in that clip, man, y'all heard it first. Allegedly, man, this might resurface where there might be a guarantee that this will 
have a court date. So Aaliyah may get some justice behind mm. Jay-Z, behind Lenny Kravitz, who lent his jet. Lenny Kravitz lent her the jet that she was on that she allegedly died in. Mm. So they've been doing their due diligence, cuz, and digging in the research to see what's popping and what's circulating. Now, this is a big thing, man, because a lot yeah. of people knew and Dame was one of the ones that put people on this that Dame yeah. really didn't say. Now, I want y'all to go back on this because you brought up this young lady's name, Miss Jaguar Wright. Jaguar Wright was the one that kind of exposed the stuff about Dame, but turned yeah. around and said, I'm going to give Dame his platform. When you did the last yeah. episode on Jaguar. Yeah. You were talking about, you know, yeah. exposing Jay. She didn't, she didn't want to expose the information. She wanted Dane to come out and tell people about Aaliyah she because she wanted him ten toes down. Yep, to give him time to get it off the way he wanted to. So with that being said, now it surfaces that there could be a potential case in 2023 mm. to reopen this to make sure that Aaliyah gets justice and saying her death was planned. Cuz, what's your that, thoughts on it? Man, if that's the case, they might as well open up all the books. I felt the same you know way. I with, feel the same way. With Left Eye. I uh, feel the same way. Everybody that we had just lost, Grandmaster J, all them people. The everybody same that way. was I feel the same in way. the boat where it was something suspicious that had took place. Maybe we see that. Maybe we see that at the end man, of the day when some, they shine some. light on this case, because this is a big case. And I think this is something that Dame Dash maybe have part taken in or something to do with it because how does something like this surface? Now you've been working on this in the back end, which I don't blame him because he knows that they had a conversation. He was, uh, and he says so this on the, on the show. And we'll find she, that clip somewhere. Uh, you know, that when he talked like to Aaliyah plane. the day before she like, well, left, on it. she did not want to like, get well, on that plane because, because she had a fear for it. flying. She so with that being said, she had a fear for flying. Who was who was uh who was uh Lenny Kravitz known for doing songs with? And you've Man. heard it. We'll, we'll go back. I'm gonna give you a hint. Blueprint, the Jay. Blueprint too. He did a song with Jay. He's been Blueprint. known to do multiple songs um. with Jay. Man, I'm having a lot. Yeah. Back with your man Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. Dun, 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 on the uh, how to go. Lenny looks like a dark. Oh, he is a dark soul. Those, in those he's videos, a dark soul, bro. bro. Like, he's a dark going soul, back, bro. looking back at it, like yeah. he looked like he was a dark soul. Like he was doing some type of you damn of right. Foolery. And he lent the jet to her that eventually crashed now, and I'm, led to her death. I, I mean, now, now, far as that is concerned, he doesn't really have control over the maintenance. But hey, however, hey, however, shit. if you're not paying your crew to do the maintenance on your he jet, he might it, shouldn't, not, it shouldn't even went off the ground. He might not have control of that maintenance, but you not saying that somebody gave him a call like, okay, let let yeah. Leah your jet, yeah. and then we gonna we gonna mess up an uh, engine no, not, turbine up saying, in that mud and saying. set her up. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm not saying he don't have nothing to do. I'm just saying. Right. I know. I know. What he you're don't. Saying. He don't. He don't technically have anything to do with it. But at the same time, like, yeah, you do, you buddy. Do. Yeah, you, you do. Let, you lent your jet. Why, why did it have to be a limit? And him and Jay-Z is like this. Now, you hear Jay-Z side because we showed in our episodes where we, I've told you, I believe Jay-Z right, was messing Jay -Z. with Aaliyah. Right, R. Kelly was Jay. messing with Aaliyah. And then Dane was messing with Aaliyah. And I yeah. showed that in previous episodes yeah. of Jay-Z with his arm around. We'll include that yeah. in this episode with Jay-Z around Aaliyah. And I'm not talking about just like, you know, what's no, up? We taking to, pictures as friends. Like, they through. was booed up. You know what I'm saying? Through. Oh, yeah, he did. But nobody has never seen that. You know, we, not, we included it on our show. Let me clear that up. I'm not saying run through like a disrespectful man. I'm no, just saying you like, mean. you know what I'm no, saying? I like, know what you mean. He, he used to take her down through there. Yeah, he did. But nobody never looked at that. So when, when R. Kelly got into his spiel with the whole, uh, you know, the, the young girls being raped, I told you, bro, when we brought that up, I feel like Jay-Z has something to do with it too. Man. Because you're not going to be my right-hand man. You my cuz. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Nigga, you know everything I do. Right, wrong, whatever. You know, everything that I do right. as a human, bro. So if you see me, you know what I'm saying, right? you're going to be on the same thing I'm on. Like, it's, it's two peas in the pot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas are like that. That's why 
Jay Z and the nigga shunned that nigga from that concert. Unless, unless it was some stuff that I didn't agree with. Right, exactly. You know but you ain't never seen Jay. me take you down no rabbit right. hole. Like we messing with some young girls, bro. Right. We ain't doing none of that. I'm, I'm smarter than that. You know what I'm saying? We built like we built like Ford out here. You saying right. we, we Ford tough out here? Yeah. But I'm just That's saying, true. you know, to the magnitude of what you see now. Look at it, man. Look at all the signs in front of you that Jay-Z was messing with Aaliyah. Dane was messing with Aaliyah. Jay and, Jay and uh, Dame Dash uh, parted from Rockefeller. Like, all this stuff. Man. Aaliyah dies. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff going on. So, I think this is dope, man. This is dope. Yeah, if like, they I bring think... this back, like man. they say they are, I would love to see Grandmaster Flash. You know, all these people that allegedly, Kobe Bryant, you know what I'm saying? Let's find out what really mean, happened uh, to the, you mean, to the uh, but uh, you see it though, man. Like I said, man, you got a lot of people that um, overlook a situation like this, man. And this heavily. happens all the time. So I think if this resurfaces, I think this will definitely be a game changer because this is something that Dame has held deep in his heart for a yeah. while. And that's what I'm saying. like. If I was him, I kind of would have been pushing for this moment too to to avenge, you know, her death Absolutely. and what really happened to her. Man, man. Somebody gonna pay for it, he, bro. Somebody about to pay for the it. The funny bro. thing about it is, is whenever he's asked about certain situations, you could tell you that tell, it hurt has, that nigga heart, bro. He has some love for her. You know what I'm saying? For sure, love. Um, she was once again at of age. To be with him then, yeah. Yeah, with that him. That was the last person she dated before yeah. she died. Um, and it's so odd because looking back at some of the videos, thinking back and looking back at some of the videos, that's kind of sus. With Dane, yeah. you know what I'm saying? With the, the bottles, you know what I'm saying? Being in the videos and with different things. For me, it's Jay because when I seen it's Jay, it's definitely the, Jay. And then we seen well, we I seen didn't, we seen I didn't Kelly see that till till like way later. Right, we seen Kelly first, so let's back yeah. that up. We seen Kelly, then yeah. it went from Kelly to Jay yeah. to Dane. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So she, she got passed. Yeah, but, man. Yeah. So you that's know, it's, yeah, I know that's how they do, but that's what I'm saying. Everybody want to sit back and talk about R. Kelly, R. Kelly. Jay Z ass need to be thrown under that bus man, too because he was definitely you said it because he was messing with. When I said Aaliyah, you said Foxy Brown. Yeah. Never. Yeah. So with that being said, that's two people right there. Underage girls that if, if R. Kelly was doing this back in the day, was, was Jay not doing the same thing? 17, I think Foxy was when she was. I don't know now. I, 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 now I don't know if in legal. the state of New York, if that would nah, be considered legal. Nope. No, that wasn't legal. Hell no. Nah, I, I, I don't know if thing. at 17. Nope. Would be legal in the state of New York. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I doubt but, it. But and I'm not giving no benefit of the doubt. I'm just saying. I doubt that. You 20 some odd years old and you messing with a 17 year old, like bro, you you sound like you get caught up with that issue. statutory and that's get him. That's why I said, man, I just had to bring this Should up, man. She was like 21, but these niggas 22. don't. We, we, you know, that's been going on since we was young. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah, it's gonna see. be a couple dudes that's gonna be out the bunch that's gonna take you that dumb leap. You feel what I'm you saying? See the D boys pick the little young girls up. Oh, they do. do you, 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 they get them young so they can get them dumb. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like I said, man, buying we know a, the game. Buying a couple pair of I just want to say with this one, man, this is a dope one because Absolutely. this is just now servicing. I think once people see the episode and be able to kind of dig their uh, dig their research up on their own, they'll see that this is a real thing that they said will happen here in 2023 sometime. So I just think this is dope, man. Um, and to be able to let man, her family rest. It's just crazy, that, bro, to even, see this resurface, man. I didn't even see that, but I see, I did see something that I was going to like look further into. Yes, sir. Um, Get into it. With Jaguar. Yeah. She Trey. been going hard, ain't man, she? Man, she been going in Airing on Jay. Out. Like, she, she at his neck. Jay, she Tim must Campbell, have did all something. Of you know what I'm saying? He must have did something to her. Yeah, he did, bro. To Jaguar, you know what I'm saying? For her to be like not Going letting her up off the with pressure. Me. Man. Um, I was gonna check into that, but I didn't check into it. However, man, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That you say that. She been going in on Jay Man. for some odd reason. She got her foot on his neck, ain't letting up the no pressure. pressure. Yeah. She's letting she's letting all this stuff be known. I don't know what he did. 
He must have did you know something. Did. You know what I'm saying? You know what but he did. A lot of bro, y'all, y'all, do. y'all check out this clip. You know what I'm saying? And we gonna go ahead and get back to y'all in a sec. But to watch all of these greasy ass bastards, roll call. And Lord for us, I mean you no harm. But I'm gonna put you out on Front Street. I know you didn't know about me and Elle's personal relationship, but I know you know Elle, and I know how close you was with Elle. I don't believe for, I, I do not believe in my heart of heart that you don't know that this nigga was responsible for moving move that Elle around. Sean Carter, I believe everything that Big L ever told me, he never lied to me. Lamont never lied to me. And the last time I was with him, he told me that you was gonna try to kill him. He told me not to trust you. And he told me to watch out for you. And he told me that your greatest sin is coveting, Sean Carter. You're a coveter. I have no doubt in my mind that it was you that sent the shooter to shoot Beanie as soon as he got home. His mother was so terrified. We had to show at the TLA. I was there the second time because the first time we couldn't do it because you can send shooters to shoot this man and not to kill him. They shot him in his lung so it would make it twice as hard for him to be able to perform effectively. I'm sick and tired of you, Sean. Now you get with my website? What you trying to buy the uh, company that bought, that got my server? We go onto the website to start putting everything together and getting a new console together and I can't get on my shit at all. Now we gotta go to the, I gotta go find fucking Batman to come and build firewall around my shit. You think you gonna freeze me out? You think you gonna make it impossible for me to get fucking bread so I can keep telling the truth about your monkey ass? You Sean Carter. Send more bloggers. I'll fucking wreck them too. Elle told me you was gonna try to kill him and I believe you done it. Sue me. Let's go to court. I want to tell the judge everything Big L told me a fuck about you. You covered this monkey. Tapping my goddamn phones. Send them. Let them come. I'm fucking done. I'm rocking fatigues every day until I can send whoever the fuck send it. But I tell you right now, whoever I'm sending is a dead man. I promise you that. Any motherfucking body, if they can't sneak up on me or snipe me, they're a dead man. I ain't going after nobody, but anybody walked up on me, I'm shooting you in your face. All I need is lots of prayer and 25 racks. If I get booked, it'll be for second degree murder. That shouldn't be more than $250,000 bond. I'll beat the charge, because defending myself is, is legal. I just can't sit, because I know they'll try to send somebody to kill me in jail while I'm locked up. You believe in me? Y'all niggas want to help me? Send me a dollar. Donate a dollar to my cash app. Don't get rid of your subscription. I'm headed to the office right now. We gonna get this shit squared away. They ain't with my website. I need all the help I can get. What I need though is bail money. Cause I know they sending people for me. Let them come. I know you killed them. You covered this shit. You try to steal his life. And you try to clean it up. You try to get a lead. Try to get me. But you had to go get the dumbest bitch on the block. That, that wanted to be famous. Free Beyonce after that bitch a prisoner. Stay off my page, Tina knows. You used to sell see when you was young to get money. Sell it now. Stay the fuck off my page, Tina. Get no fuck you is fucking JC. You probably got the herpes he gave everybody else. Fucking whore. Sell your children off so you can have furs and get shit. Your husband was pimping your daughter and you let him do it and then you suppress Solange and she's the one with the real talent you know about no Tina for nose stay the fuck up off my page Tina in New York like he didn't show up as Jay-Z he didn't show up as the hottest rapper on the street he showed up as the nigga that was with Big L rest in peace rest in peace Big L rest in peace Big L <laughs> One of that the was dopest. The one of the dopest. Yes. Big L was who put Jay Z on. Oh. Without question. And then Big L died, and the next thing you know, Jay Z. And then, you know, he starts clientele with Tupac and clientele with Biggie and doing songs with Biggie and building a working, you know, camaraderie with. Honey Rest Cole. in peace, Big and L for real. What's up, King Pain? Um, AKA Diddler. I mean, Diddy. 
And um, why do you give the hoodie coat? So why do you give him hoodie coat? Cause he smacks so sweet. Y'all just heard Keith Murray say that that nigga smacks so sweet. Fucking should slap a taste out of his mouth. Um. So yeah, then. You know, and then reasonable doubt was happening, and then Dame's in the picture, and Dame's building Rockefeller. Dame was going to sign Big L, L. not Jay Z. Dame. What don't y'all understand? Rockefeller was built by Dame and Dash. Sean Carter. He was a pop. He was a talent. He's not at least an executive at title. At least. Like I said, Biggie, Biggie died. Tupac died. And then there was the, the the fight between who was the top rapper now, Nas and, and Jay Z. And then the next thing you know, Nas has a nervous breakdown and he's taken out of the game. Cause somebody micked him. It's all Jay Z. It's all Jay Z. And he was working with R. Kelly and they were making so many records <coughs> together. You know, they made all of those records together. They both. Back to the end. <laughs> I want to ask you about Jay Z because I always heard like you had some kind of C and D where you couldn't talk about Jay Z, but I never signed no paperwork. Okay, you never signed no paperwork. I just didn't want to put my family's life on the line. Mm, so you were worried about him coming to get you. Yeah, like everybody else is. Mm, because I've seen a lot of F Rock Nation on your page and stuff like yeah, that. So now you're more vocal. It what was the far. turning point? It went too far. Mm. Sean Combs and Sean Carter have been working together for the better part of 25 years to find a way to take over full control of the entertainment industry. They have been slumping and sidelining relevant hip hop communities for decades so that they can have control. Now they done killed Jacqueline Avon and they done picked up old Clarence Avon and now they running around acting like they, they remind me of fucking Macaulay Culkin and fucking um, Home Alone. Mm. That's what these niggas is acting like out here. They rigging shit, doing all kinds of shit and happy that ain't nobody around to tell them what to do and they just get to act the fool. Free Beyonce. She a prisoner. Now you had said that you felt that Beyonce was a Beyonce. because I always heard their relationship was put together Beyonce. like it was a right yeah a business or I, I did she hear that him and Matthew Knowles had a deal and then he screwed him Let, I'm gonna make it easy sue me yes. I want to be sued her. <laughs> I want to be sued Jack why do you want to be sued because I want to have to go to court. Because well, if I, I go to that. court, if I go to court, I got to swear on the Bible to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And I believe in the God that they say that it's all about. So I'm not going to lie. Mm. And then I get to say all of those things that I haven't said on court record in front of a judge, which could open up other investigations into other things, which is why y'all niggas want me killed. Sue me. Please. Wow. Please. Sir. Here y'all go. Y'all see it there, man. Like, it's wild, bro. Like, it's... Jay, a lot of stuff is coming. I don't know if it's because of your success that you at, yeah. where you getting this, but yeah. they say with the music industry, the the... the the other industries that you've in, you know, as far as being the celebrity, facts, facts. if you took that oath, you did. You took it. You too, know what I'm saying? Too many people knowing, don't said it. You took that that oath to know that your soul was, you know, claimed by this, but it comes with a price, right? So maybe this is that price that's being thrown when it comes down to it, right? I'm not sure, bro. Bro, I'll tell you like this, man. Uh, I like when you bring up, when you brought up Jack Ryan, it made me remember her. Uh-uh. What you doing? I, I was checking time. We're going to be done at 7.30. So you can, we can play the game. We ain't forgot no, about I, you. No, I, I Just keep an eye on the clock. When it's 7.30, we won't be on 7.30. We're going to be done. But three, two, one. Um, Because I, I, I really like... The fact that you covered her on the last one, like I said, it really made me forget about her being a singer, you know yeah. what I mean? Being she, a poet, being a part of the Fugees. Right. 
Um, you know, if y'all haven't, you know, go back and check out the episode where Cuz put down Jack Ryan right. Um, what I come with that week, I can't remember. But it went hand to Jay Z. Yeah, it we was, went hand to hand. Yeah, it was about Jay Z again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? About the whole nine with him. Um, real quick, if y'all not hip to who she is or don't know, listen to Jay Z live. Oh yeah. She was she singing. Was singing she was on singing. Song Cry. That was the vocalist yeah. that you heard. Yeah. But she was singing where she first started her career was with, with the Fugees and She um, was a rapper. She was she a rapper, but they a rapper, she went but she went from rap. Yeah. And then they made her do sing. It all. She, she could do, do it all. all, but she went from rap to singing. When she got right. with Lauren Hill, they made her a background singer. They said Lauren was the you know, was the vocalist. Yeah, she, we gonna put her as background. You know what I'm saying? But she never got her really chance to to shine the, because they did it. So what she did, what she did was take her rapping and the singing and kind of merge it yeah. together, where she became a poet, a lyricist. Like y'all go back to our Jaguar Wright show where Cuz spit it, and y'all listen to the flow she spit yeah. on that episode. Yeah. Like she was crafty with it, but. My thing with her is this, family, and I'm glad that you brought this up with Jay because not only is she exposing Jay-Z, she's exposing Tevin, Tevin Campbell, Raphael Sadiq, Brian McKnight, Meek yeah. Mill. It goes on and Bro, on. Bro, I don't hurt Will Smith. Man, I don't hear so I don't watch so many videos on her. And you way. really hit that bank for me to to kind of dig deeper. Gabriel Union. Gabriel Union's out there too. I'm talking about interviews she did two years ago. Yeah. This is the one she did two years yeah. ago with the podcast. Yeah. So y'all got to look at what she's saying. So y'all mean to tell me that people like this ain't giving y'all the gift of gab in that game to make y'all do the due diligence to check it and see for yourself? Because all we doing is spitting the same thing yeah. that we watching from her. That's why he bringing it up because... She is on everybody neck. She on J neck especially, but she need to Erica be. Erica Bad Dude. Every, everybody, bro. She going hard. She, she went hard on Mary J. Blige. Common. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, the list goes on and on. Man, Man. She, she was going crazy, bro. Not she only that, crazy. too, because, you know, I want to inquire this just because we got the platform to do it. Orlando Brown has also stepped out along with her, too. We're yeah. going to... So I want to I want to include this one too. So we're gonna give y'all not one, not two. We're gonna give y'all another video, man. So we're gonna take a quick pause for the call. Y'all gonna kick back and listen to what Orlando had to say. So y'all make sure y'all check out the clip, man. We're gonna be right back here on One Buck Podcast. One of the things I seen that you kind of spoke about recently was I seen you speaking about Hollywood or Holly Weird and you know people selling their souls and. You know, I know you were kind of, you know, linked into Hollywood and everything for a long time. And you I know am what I'm Hollywood. Yeah, I am Hollywood, which is why I know. But I'm not arrogantly going to sit here and be like, oh, this is that and this is that. Like, there's a lot of things that will make you buckle, bro. They make you buckle, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, they make you start crying. Like, you know what I'm saying? What people do. Like, it's not no glory to be talking about. It's really, right. high, it's really Hollywood. It's really f***ed up out there. It's really f***ed up bad. And like, you just be like, I was just listening to that man's album. His star is on the floor and it's sitting right here. Like you, unless you're not intoxicated, unless you're just, you know, you have to be really in tune with life and just notice bone structure, skin, eye color, everything. You have to be in tune and you'll be able to see it. It'll manifest itself right in front of you. You know what I'm saying? But just for me to be sitting here and being like, nah, nah, cause man, people done lost their families, bro. People done lost their kids and shit. People, people, uh, people, um, a lot of stuff done happened. Do you think there needs to be more of a light shed on with, on Hollywood or Holly no, Weird? No. No. Exposed more? No. Don't nobody want to know what happened to them people's families and shit. Don't nobody need to know that shit. Mm. Ever. I know. That's all I need. To, that's all I need. I don't need to do that. That's not for me to be that uh, nigga. You get killed for shit like that. That shit is real. You know what I'm saying? People don't really, really went through some shit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Every once in a while, you have somebody come out and kind of say some things about Hollywood or some of the stuff that they see. When I tell you I am Hollywood, I mean, I literally am Hollywood. 
Expand on that a little bit. What do, what do you mean by you are Hollywood? What do you mean I am Hollywood? Like, what? Like, you ever seen, uh, you ever seen Baba Lou? Baba Lou. Okay. You know, yeah, Desi Arnaz, you know, Desi Arnaz. Yep. You know, Joe Jackson, right? You know who yep. Joe Jackson is? Okay, cool. Yeah, my daddy owned all that shit. Every studio in Hollywood, every fucking block in Hollywood, anything you can fucking name in Hollywood belongs to Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. <laughs> so when it comes down to it, you know, um, not to disclose too much, but I will tell you, I am Hollywood. I'm their baby. You know what I'm saying? So some shit, I just can't be like telling. It's a lot of people that got fucked off behind trying to be where my mom and dad is at, at the top. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you got to just be real cool. got to be real evil with how you think, you know? Like, my daddy is Lucifer and my mom is God. You understand me? So it's, I'm a very special case. They get so I can't put myself in position to be just like talking about people. Like, people got smoked, people got kidnapped, people got a lot of people got fucked off behind Hollywood, bro. And they're dwelling right there. That's all I can tell you. French Montana said something recently that was real interesting. I mean, it, it's not directly with Hollywood, but you know, it's about record labels. And he said the record labels are taking life insurance policies out on rappers mm. um mainly because it's more dangerous i mean for rappers now i mean this is a touchy subject i just you know uh I, i'll give you this you can willingly turn woman and have a bag or you can do what i'm doing you can willingly turn trans or you can get in trouble and get your go to jail and get fucked up and they do it to you forcefully because you fucked up and you didn't know what to do with your blessing. So out of those two ways, me sitting here in one piece is not easy. It's not easy at all. You have to be respectful. Like, can't be just like, oh yeah, you think I'm, you think I'm sitting here playing with people's lives, and these niggas got wives and shit, bro, and kids and shit. Yeah, what they did to me was fucked up. So I, I have the right to say whatever the fuck I want to say because they never thought I'd be able to say it. Okay, but when it come down to just this industry and how people are willingly turning trans, turning female rapper just to get the bag, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I will tell you. Other than that, bro. All that shit is bullshit. All of it is bullshit. Ain't nobody gonna work no more. Ain't nobody gonna fight the devil. Ain't nobody gonna fight my daddy. Ain't nobody wanna fight my daddy. That... Like real shit. I'm telling you, don't nobody wanna fight. And I'm sitting there talking, I said, Dad, look at me. I'm fucked up. You better let these people go. <laughs> Stop fucking with people. He's like, no, nah, nigga, I'm gonna fuck with you too. I'm like, nah, nigga, you can't. All right, fine then. Now it's down to love. Either you love me and leave me alone, leave me in the world alone, or give us all what we need and let us play. And that's where we're at right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just can't, I just can't go back and forth about the industry and all that shit. It's just, it, it's bullshit. All of it's bullshit. If you can't stand up for yourself, if you can't, speak for yourself if you can't take what god's giving you and and go through the battles of having a gift a divine gift then it shouldn't be for you it should be taken from you <laughs> in jesus name <laughs> mm, okay okay so y'all heard it right there orlando uh coming through you know uh, touching up on what cuz was talking about with jaguar Cuz, what's your thoughts on people just exposing, um, you know, and how people should wake up to what they're seeing these people doing? Should they look at it like they're going crazy or should they look at it like these people are trying to tell them something? What's your thoughts on it? I believe that people is trying to tell them something. Um, however, when you get to a certain, I, 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 can't, I can't even really say a stature of success. I think it's anything 
Like there's a there's a play in the playbook that oh, they yeah. had said. <laughs> oh yeah, they know. Like back in what, I like how 50s? you put that too. <laughs> I think they implemented that. Like whenever somebody it's you bad, know is bro. being too truthful, yeah. being too this to that, you know what I'm saying? Wake up. Turn it around and make them seem because they 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 not really like uh, following what the what they need to do. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Make it paint the narrative as a crazy terrorist yep. or something of the nature. That's what they And want. America follows that. They do. Because the world follows it. But look how they've been trained all this time not to see what they need to see. I so keep, when you do that. My bad. I keep saying America, but it's really the it's world. The world. It's the, the world. world. It's a world thing, man. It's, it's nations. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Upon nations that orchestrate things together. Um, you know, I think it's dope when people come out like that, man, because that really gives you a narrative of what people don't see behind closed doors. There's either one or two reasons why somebody would come out and say yeah. something like that because they've generally been hurt from it yeah. or they want to expose it so nobody yeah. else gets hurt from it. Yeah. So when I see this come out, this woman has not been mainstream. Jaguar Rice, she has dropped albums throughout the year and performed yeah. live and stuff, which Overse- I think is dope. Overseas in Europe? Yep, overseas yeah. in Europe. Ben she busy. had a couple albums, yeah. a couple albums. We had them on our last show. We'll include them yeah. on this one for you, too, just the uh, covers of the albums. She's promoting, but, she's promoting people yeah. who's not even getting a shot. That's dope. That's dope, yeah. You, you know, know what I'm saying? People like that that need They're not yeah. getting their shot because she knows what's yeah. going on behind the, the scene. The music industry, yeah. boy, is yeah, something, something else, else, man. It's something else. It's the devil in disguise, man. He'll wake you with a prize. I'm just telling you like that, man. For real, for real, bro. So and I see why, you know, a lot of people say, forget that. I'm going independent. I'm going independent. For what? Why? So somebody can so somebody can get in your bag? Go to them parties. <laughs> mess you up mentally. <laughs> mess you up mentally, get the dirt on you, you know what I'm saying? Hold Physically. it over your head. So you got people like this that's coming out. And I'm glad that a woman like Jag Ryan Wright, you, she didn't take, she she admitted it. And, and I will play that clip of her spitting that dope rhyme that we had in our last yeah. episode where she was talking about, you know, um, the soul snatcher. The soul snatcher. She admits yeah. that she was a part of something. But when yeah. it becomes a point where it's too dark for you, you're either yeah. going to do one or two things. You're going to rock with it and let it keep happening to right. you, or you're going to pull the hell away from it. Away. And that's, that's what, what she did. did. So, cuz. This was a dope one, man. Absolutely. I, I, I like I the fact you. that, you know, you bringing her up, man. And this is the second man, time we've done it. you kicked this off, though, bro. Hey, hey this is how you it works, it. Man, it just we can't like make it, it up. Just hand in hand. It's like a pick and roll, man, you know what I'm saying? can't make it up. Can't stop the pick and roll. Can't make it up, man, for real, can't for real. Can't stop the pick and roll. Because you know how we do, man. Uh, that was a dope episode right here, Absolutely, man. Always man. locked in. We Absolutely. got something extra special for y'all, man. We got one of the highly... Uh, most highly anticipated sneakers that we have heard that will re-release in the first time. And you said 18, 19 years? About 18. Like that. About 20 18. piece. We give yeah, it to it's them. Almost, it's almost 20. It's, it's probably a little bit under that. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's coming there. up close. It seems like almost. it's been about 20 of them, though. Uh, let's see, 23. We got about six more years man, before yeah, it be man, 20. Man, man facts, so, bro. Because we to that point of the show, man, where we call it that what? Heat for your feet. We got some blazing heat for y'all today. Like I said, like Cuz said, this shoe has not released in almost, I'm gonna put just put it like a G stamp on this, about 20 years. It has felt like that to me. Yeah. I've got one pair remaining, had to re-glue them to make them fit to where they are. I still wear them to this day. 14 years. I'm calling 20 because it seemed like 13, it's been 13, 20 for me. 13, I bet 14, I had this shoe. 13, 14, something like that. Two pairs. And this is one of the pairs that I had left from high school. I've had it so long, I had to re-glue it, put it back together again. Humpty Dumpty, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Put it back together again. But y'all know what time it is. On that heat for your feet. Y'all see the box. It is, is that OG J. box. OG. Man, it's beat down. It's been a long round of time for some times. Because you know how we do, man. We got to keep it original gangster on here. Y'all see it as is that Cherry 12. Now, this shoe is rumored to re-release in the times that it's in. They say it will release in 2023. This shoe has not released. To me, it feels like it's been over 20 some odd years. <clears throat> One of the most... Man, when I seen this shoe... 
I said, I gotta have it. Back in the day, I was when this say, shoe what was your feeling out, when this shoe dropped? When this shoe dropped, I was one of the ones that had it in high school. You know, back in the day, Jordan releases on Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday. Now, of course, now of course that you know, family, they do releases on Saturday. Uh, but I had this shoe in high school. When this shoe first came out, I had to go. I, I snuck to the mall to go. I was gonna say shoe. people was going dummy in in Lakeview Square Mall. Man, class, you know what was your thoughts on this shoe when you first seen it? Man, I. I didn't even stand in line. I didn't even, you know, attempt. Uh, I knew it was going to be crazy. Right. When I seen you pull him out in your game, I said, dog, what, the, what is he doing? Man. <laughs> what is he win. doing? I couldn't even, I couldn't even uh, you know, I had to, it was so fresh, I had to hoop him. And Wasn't it you and Tay? Tay had the blue one. He had the blue one white okay. one. I had these. I think I was the only one because everybody slept on yeah, these. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to tell you how old these is. Like I said, man, you can see the re-glue on them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It comes to a point where you fail when you're putting a shoe back together and you will have certain glue marks, but y'all can see that toe box. This is the original gangster. Leather still flush. I did have to, you know, resurface the shoe. I had to take the whole bottom half off, yeah. the whole side, because the shoe fell apart over time. Man, but for you to still have that sneaker, though, Man. you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Classic. It ain't white as it used to be. Uh, it's definitely yellowed over time, but man, we will get a chance. The original, to see these. though, the original back in from what time? Uh, check that one, because I got two pairs of these, so I got the. Uh, it might be the 09 release, and then I've got the original release that came out in 96. Yeah, on um, But I tell you what, it should be on the side. We're going to definitely bring these two out. We showed y'all that one on the last epi right here. Uh, you know, just dope, in my opinion, with these two sneakers. When these sneakers drop, man, they change the game in totality. Uh, I think Jordan Brand really, really brought it. Uh, you know, when they introduced this 12, when they came out with that black and white, oh, they went dummy. On my birthday. And then they and went dummy nine. when they dropped these. So these are the 09 pair. I do have the 1996 pair as well. They're a lot yellower than this. And if I put my foot in my mouth, you know, blew them out. Just put it like that. 1996. But y'all see the two colorways, man. Jordan Brand knew what he was doing. Two dope classes, y'all only gonna get them right here on the Buck Podcast, man, because this is what we do, man. We do shoes, we get y'all game, because what else we give them? Man, you just covered it. We, we give you that 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 info to make your brain think, man. you know what I'm saying? Them clicks start clicking, them, yes, them brain signals start beeping, you know yes, what I'm sir. saying? You might get to talking to yourself like a uh, blank man, you know man. what I'm saying? J5, man, what's, what's happening, happening to me? Right, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's real still, man. Might get to talking to yourself, you know what I'm saying? And then figure out like, dog, I see what's going on. You know, not saying that we like on that godly tip. That's nah, not it. Nah, that's nah, not nah, it at nah, all. Nah, I'm yeah, just saying. That to the, to the this is line, that info mind. that's expanding your mind. Like cuz always say, it's like, it's just more to make you just, just, Get Got comfortable in, with think. thinking. Yeah. Just think. 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 That's what your brain is up there for. That's what yeah. I was always told. Think. Yeah, don't let the world dumb you down. Um, and, and Remember that. that. Got on you, you feel me? A lot of people do, and a lot of people get caught in the mix. Yeah. That's why we try to have a little fun with it. You know what I'm saying? And if we leave the door open for y'all to watch us create the narrative and then y'all take it like us and just do your research on it. Because like I said, man, all your blessings lock in. Always Stay always loaded. A uh, make sure y'all follow us on IG at where, family? One underscore buck underscore podcast spelled just like that. Just like that, man. Y'all can follow us on YouTube. Y'all already know that one book podcast in between the one and the buck is a dollar sign. And then at the end, you replace that S, take it off your chest, and replace it with a dollar sign as well. Um, you know, just you know, stay blessed, man, and keep it off your chest at the end of the day, man. But look, cuz, you know how we do it. We say it on every single show. Look, we gonna pick up what we put down on this one, cuz, on the next one. And this is One Buck Podcast. Where we keep it a buck, and, and we, we hope y'all keep it a buck, too. Peace.